I made this video not because I'm any good at soldering, but because when I decided to make a new rectifying column, this turned out to be by far the most difficult job, despite my consulting web pages and several YouTube videos, some by other home distillers who've done the same thing. I needed to make six of these joints and I managed it only after at least 20 failed joints that leaked. I'm using the same lead-free tin-based solder that you use for soldering copper pipe. And the problem is with the flux. You use a liquid flux that is either phosphoric acid or a mixture of hydrochloric acid and zinc, which is what I used. It's a watery liquid. It doesn't cling to a metal surface the way the paste fluxes used with copper soldering do. Also, it boils away quickly. The result is that if you're heating up the joint with a cheap blowtorch as I am, you have a much shorter time window in which to apply the solder than you do with copper soldering. If you wait too long, flux will evaporate and the metal surfaces will reoxidize. The stainless steel surface is the most critical one. It reoxidizes faster than the copper surface. So you need to heat the joint from the copper side, so the surface that is hottest longest is the one that tolerates that best without reoxidizing. I had multiple failures by assembling the joints, adding the flux and then heating the joint directly or the stainless steel ferrule mainly and it never worked because by the time the copper was hot enough the flux had already boiled off and the stainless steel reoxidized. Failed joints in copper are easy to remake because copper is soft and easily cleaned but stainless steel is hard and to re-clean the oxide coating off takes either a lot of elbow grease or some mechanical assistance. I used fine emery paper and this cylindrical burr. It was only when I assembled the joint, fluxed it and then heated the copper pipe above the joint, not playing the flame on the joint and keeping the solder out of the flame, that I got my first success. That way the side of the joint that's hot longest is the side that has the longest time window for applying solder. Once the solder has run all the way round, you can heat the stainless steel to make sure the whole joint is hot enough for the solder to soak in fully. I was feeling very pleased with myself until I hit my most difficult joint, which was this one. I made the bottom joint of this isothermal deflagmator as I had the others by heating the pipe. I then assembled the copper pot on it. If I'd had any forethought, I would have used a longer piece of copper pipe and left it protruding, soldering the joint using the pipe extension to heat the joint, then cut the pipe down to length. But, of course, I didn't have forethought. I tried again and again to get this joint to work by heating the copper from the inside, using electric paint stripper type heater, trying to heat evenly, adding flux partway through heating, and nothing worked. Half of my failures were on this joint alone. But take heart, because when I finally got it to work, it was my best joint yet, and it wasn't difficult. I took a piece of copper pipe about three inches long. I prepared the joint in the usual way and added the flux. Then I heated the joint from the copper pipe and added the solder. When it had run all the way around the joint, I heated the ferrule directly to make sure the joint was all hot. While it was still hot, I disassembled it. And while the ferrule was still hot, I used a heat-proof cloth to wipe the excess liquid solder off the inside. That resulted in the outside of the piece of pipe and the inside of the ferrule being tinned with solder. Then I cleaned the end of the pipe coming out of the isothermal deflagmator and applied ordinary copper pipe paste flux to the pipe. I assembled the joint, which took a bit of hammering as my wiping of the inside of the ferrule had not been perfect. Then I heated the joint directly from the ferrule. When it was hot, applied a little more solder and it worked perfectly. I thought I'd share that in case anybody else is struggling as I did. I'm no metalworking expert. In fact, I'm fairly bad at making things generally, but if anyone's interested in my experiences soldering up copper distillation equipment using simple and, of course, cheap tools and materials, then let me know and I'll post more videos.